Let me uh, um, give a highlight of the, the first notebook, which is what we call initial data exploration. Um, the key idea is that in, in Pandas or in Python, there is uh, pickle files. Instead of uh, using uh, text files, uh, Roger is going to demonstrate how to load and save data using pickle files, which uh, take much less room and certainly make it much faster to uh, upload and download. Um, and um, so, as he said also, that uh, we are going to, you know, it's a very simple data set uh, courtesy of CSI data. Uh, we have uh, selected about a thousand US stocks from that data set. And um, uh, we will have uh, um, a simple uh, open, high, low, close and uh, volume data bars. Uh, by the way, the close also, uh, there's a, you know, they are all adjusted by split and dividend, but also um, we are providing an unadjusted version. Uh, I mean, CSI data also provided an unadjusted close. So the first um, uh, exercise uh, that actually Walter will demonstrate is just to create a pandas data frame of this, uh, this data and look at some uh, initial statistics of the data and note some of the irregularities uh, in the stock symbol. Uh, you will see that, for example, some stocks have two classes. How do we deal with that? And so on and so forth. So that's what uh, he will be uh, demonstrating. Okay, so as I said, the data comes from CSI, and we built a single data frame just to take the um, 1,000 stocks. So let's just load it. And the standard sort of thing when you first look at a database, or, or look at data, is just a few standard things in, in um, in pandas, so asking for info. So there's 3.89 million um, rows, eight columns. We'll do this describe, which provides some basic statistics. And one thing that we see right away is that there are no zero values in any of the stocks in volume. Uh, sorry, other than volume, which um, actually is reasonable. Some stocks simply don't trade on certain days. Any null values? No. What sort of a date range do we have? The earliest is. December of 2000, and we're through 8th of March. How many distinct symbols do we have? 1056. Now, I loaded this data into a format that really matches that of a Kaggle competition, which means that there's a row for each stock and each day, and all in the same database. Now, this is not how the data comes from CSI. It's, it's um, downloaded it as individual CSV files, but for the purposes of this course, it's just easier to load a single file. Uh, let me also comment that there's an alternative way of um, formatting data would be uh, for um, uh, the rows to, uh, you know, to, to match to each date, right, and the different columns uh, with the different stock symbols. But if you do it that way, uh, then uh, the open, high, low, close volume and that unadjusted close will all be in different tables. It's going to be, uh, you know, a lot of different tables. Whereas here, what Roger did is, uh, you know, all the, all the data is just in one data frame. But that, uh, that requires us to uh, have uh, you know, different rows correspond to the same stock and the same date, but perhaps a different uh, Different uh, types of data. Okay, so um, by check this check here shows that there are no duplicate rows for any of the stocks, and I should say that um, there were duplicates when we first did this, and it happens that um, the reason for that 
is that um, CSI uses a period for stocks like um, for different classes of stocks like this, and that's perfectly reasonable. Others use uh, dashes. There are spaces in interactive brokers and so on. I just happened to lose sight of that fact, and when I loaded the data, uh, there were for BFA and BFB, they were all repeated because I had passed the data starting at the first period. Just a simple error, easy to do. OK, finally, we can do all of this exploratory work in one pass using Pandas Profile, which is a relatively new uh, feature of Pandas. Uh, it's been in integrated with it with the latest, and that's why I've asked that you uh, laid, load the very latest version of everything. What's nice about it is that it gives you a lot of information here, for example, it's telling us high is highly correlated with close, the same as with low and um, open as well. So it's saying rejected, saying that close is highly skewed, and volume has 42,499 zeros. So then it looks at each individual variable. So with the close, there are this many distinct variables. We don't particularly care about that. Um, but if you toggle details, it then gives you the statistical data that we get from describe. And actually, a little bit more. With dates, <clears throat> so 4,596 distinct dates. It's not particularly interesting to see the details of that. These ones, it's just basically saying we don't like them because they're too <laughs> correlated. Um, symbol is the categorical one. I added the symbol from the um, from the files into the into the data frame. Unadjusted close, the correlations, and normally, if there are missing values, you should see fine lines. Um, across this diagram, and I believe we'll see that later, and then the counts of everything. So that is the initial exploration of the data.